Hey, my name is Mike. In this video, I wanna walk you through a very important concept as you continue on your programming journey, which is working with code that other people have written. A lot of times when you're first starting out as a developer, you're generally working by yourself. You're working on programs that only you have written. But a big milestone in becoming a developer is working with code that other people have also worked on. So whether that's other members of a software development team that you're on, other members of the open source community, there's a lot of little roadblocks and potential things to be aware of as you make this next step. And so I wanna talk you through all of them and I'm gonna help you to have a smooth transition when working with code written by other people. So let's get into it and start talking about going from a solo developer to a team player, to someone that works with code that other people have written. And generally when you're first learning to code, you write all of your programs solo. And by writing all the code yourself, you really get a chance to dial in on the core concepts and to understand each and every part of the program, which is really important. But as you go into the industry or the open source community, one of the biggest transition pain points for newer developers is learning how to work with pre-existing code that you didn't write yourself, but that was written by other people. So a lot of times, if you're working with code bases at a company or on an open source project, there'll be one developer that contributes some code, another developer that contributes other code, or in fact, there might be 30 or 40 developers that are contributing code, and then you wanna come in and contribute some code of your own. All of a sudden, you're looking at foreign code. It might be messy, it might be complicated, and it might use design patterns and data structures that you have little to no experience with because after all, you didn't write it. And so for many new developers, diving into an established code base can be very intimidating. So how can we make this transition a little bit easier? And in order to do that, I'm gonna give you 10 tips for working with someone else's code. So anytime you encounter code that was written by someone else that you didn't write yourself, just follow these 10 tips and you should be on a nice path to making a difference in the code base. Step one is that it's only code. As intimidating and overwhelming as the code may look, understand that it's just code. It's not a foreign language or some mysterious hieroglyphs, it's code. And if you're tasked with working on the project, then you probably already know the language it's written in and you need to trust in your abilities. Now, with that being said, a lot of times, especially in big projects or legacy code that hasn't been updated in a while, there may be dependencies or external libraries and APIs that you're not familiar with. So a good place to start when diving into code is to figure out any libraries, APIs, or frameworks that the project is using. Step two is to set up your environment. And this is, in my opinion, the most important part and also the most annoying part, especially if you're dealing with some complicated code bases. And the whole idea here is that most projects in the real world require the environment on your local machine to be configured in a very specific way for them to work as intended. So it could be things like modifying your computer's host file, which is used for redirecting URLs, hosting a local web server, setting up and populating a local instance of a database, downloading, installing, and running external programs, yeah, utilizing special IDEs or text editors, logging into a VPN, changing the version of a program on your computer. There's a lot of these different things that you're gonna have to do and all of them are gonna depend on the specific project. So there's really no simple guide to setting up an environment for programming. The third tip is to run the tests. Another transition that can be very difficult for new developers is working with tests. A lot of programming tutorials and courses neglect to cover writing tests. It's because tests can be annoying to write. They can also be kind of tedious. Uh, but any code base worth its salt should have some form of testing in place. And tests are great because they give you an easy way to make sure the code is doing what it's supposed to do. Generally, if you're gonna be fixing bugs or adding features to the code base, you'll be responsible for writing or modifying the appropriate tests. And so it's important that you get these tests set up correctly and you get them passing. Step four is to follow the style guide. So as you've learned to write code on your own, you may have adopted a particular style. Maybe you indent with two spaces instead of tabs. Maybe you always leave a space before a curly bracket. Maybe you pack as much code onto a single line as possible. Just like you've developed your own personal syntax style, most likely so has the code base that you're working on. In an effort to keep things clean and consistent, many large code bases will have specific rules for how code should be written and how things are to be formatted. Also be aware of any design standards like colors, fonts, margins, etc. This is very important if you're doing like front end web development. You wanna make sure that you're using the specific colors that are set aside for that project or you're using things like fonts and margins and spaces appropriately. Keep in mind though that many code bases will have scripts in place to automatically format the code for you and fix any easy formatting mistakes. These are oftentimes called linters 
So if you're on a project and someone's talking about running the linter, they're probably talking about running some sort of a script that will format the code consistently with the rest of the code in the code base. All right, number five is code like everybody's watching. Any developer who's been around long enough has had the experience of working with code that's difficult to read, is poorly written, and is almost impossible to extend and add to. When you are adding code into the code base, write it with the assumption that other developers will eventually be using it and potentially modifying it. And part of that means documenting things correctly. Now, documentation could happen in the form of a comment. It could also happen in the form of tests, like unit tests that you write. And it could just be a formal documentation document that the project has set up. It's also important to keep the code consistent. So try to model your code after the code that's already been written. This ensures that all the code in the code base stays consistent, uses the same types of design patterns, and ensures that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Number six is to make use of good patterns. As programming evolves, certain best practices and patterns for doing things have emerged. A lot of times you'll hear people call these design patterns. And these are ways of writing code so that it doesn't repeat itself, so that it's extensible, and it's structured for maximum security and efficiency. These patterns can vary depending on the language or the framework you're using, but places like Codecademy, for example, and online forums like Stack Overflow can give good insights into how to write code in this optimal way and utilize these good patterns. Number seven is to ask questions. This is something that I think new developers don't do enough. Maybe because they're a little shy, they're a little timid, or maybe they're just intimidated, but when in doubt, ask someone. If it's not your code, then it's someone else's. So don't be afraid to go out of your way to ask any questions you might have. Now, obviously you wanna be respectful when you're asking questions, but you also don't wanna to be too timid. If you have a question about something and it's blocking you from doing your work, you gotta get the answer. And so make sure that you're proactive in asking people. So for the last three tips, these are gonna be specific for legacy code bases. So all the tips before this could be applied to any code bases, whether they're legacy, whether they're being actively developed, whatever it is. But these three are specific for legacy code bases. So number eight is to stay positive. A lot of times if you're working with legacy code bases, it's very easy to become bitter and negative towards the developers who wrote it. So it's always important to just stay positive. Understand that it's not the end of the world if the code is poorly written and you can actually make quite a difference in a code base if you take the time to maybe fix some of the mistakes. Number nine is to know the code. This is especially important for legacy code bases. Before you go chopping things up and changing things around, be sure that you have a good idea of how everything is connected and how it works especially if there are no tests written. This is super important if there's not tests. This is really common when you're dealing with large code bases. A lot of times the architecture and the structure of the app can be very sporadic. And so one thing might connect to another thing, another thing connects to another thing. And so if you change one little thing, that could set off some sort of a chain reaction that would cause errors in the project. So make sure that you know what's going on in the code. You don't have to know everything, but know at least the repercussions of any changes that you're making. And then finally, the last tip here is to keep changes small. Keep in mind that especially legacy code bases are generally established and there's probably a lot going on. So resist the temptation to try and refactor or fix every small problem that you see. You might be reading through the code and you're thinking, oh man, I could rewrite that function so much better or these variables have horrible names. Let me just rename them while I'm in here. The truth is though that unless those changes directly relate to the change you're making, leave them alone there could be unintended consequences to making changes like this, and it can easily snowball out of control. But if there are small fixable problems in the code that you have to modify anyway, feel free to slowly but surely make the code base better. Over time and with enough small changes, a legacy code base can have some new life breathed into it. So the last section here I wanna go over is how to gain experience. So we talked about some ways that you can make it easy on yourself when working with a code base that was written by someone else. Now we're gonna talk about how you can gain experience doing that. So the first and probably the easiest way is just to work on some open source projects. There's a lot of open source projects on GitHub that allow anyone to come in and fix up little bugs, maybe tweak the documentation. The next way would be doing some sort of an internship or maybe even some unpaid work. In my personal experience, when I was in college, I did three different internships, and it was a really good way to get experience working with actual, you know, real live code bases that were being used in companies. If you can't get an internship, you also might reach out to a company and ask them if you can do some unpaid work. Maybe they'll send you the code base and you can set it up 
and do some little tasks for free just to kind of get some experience. Finally, you can also just build things with your friends. If you have an idea for a project or an app or a website, and maybe you have some friends who are also developers, get together and get a code base up on GitHub and you guys can start contributing to it. It'll give you experience working with the code that they are writing and they can get experience working with the code that you're writing. It can just be a really beneficial experience for everyone. Thanks for watching. Join the conversation by subscribing to this channel or leaving a comment below. And if you want to take your skills to the next level, start learning at Code Academy today.